Introducing the Armenian Heritage and Social Memory Program. It's brought to you by the Alliance for Integrated Spatial Technologies at the University of South Florida, an applied interdisciplinary research center in the School of Geosciences. We're working to protect and preserve the world's cultural and natural heritage through collaborative education and global engagement and the development of curriculum and training in 3D and virtualization technologies. We do this primarily through different types of technology applied to cultural heritage projects, geographic information systems, 3D visualization and imaging, including terrestrial laser scanning and aerial LIDAR, cartography and geodesy kinds of projects that involve also remote sensing and geophysics. All of these are brought together within the fields of geosciences, social sciences, biological and physical sciences, and we work in partnership with public and private sector, national and international sectors, as well as the academic sector. So why is cultural heritage and digital preservation so important? We really have to look no further than the evening news to find evidence of destruction and decimation of heritage treasures. Even objects and literary texts that are found curated in museums are not necessarily protected. Once destroyed, these treasures of universal value are gone forever, sometimes with little to no documentation to ensure a lasting social memory. Unfortunately, the extent of this decimation extends much beyond the Middle East. At the University of South Florida, we're, we are doing digital science projects at heritage sites and museums around the world with major themes relating to monuments and world heritage landscape documentation, rock art and architecture, conditional assessment and stabilization, museum studies, and the democratization of collections using the latest in digital strategies. Our projects are of national and international importance, and we have a number of efforts relating to world heritage and global archaeological and architectural and collection documentation. Much of our work relates not only to impacts seen from human conflict and problems, but also from the loss of heritage from pollutants, weathering, and erosion, as seen in this image, where we have the historic uh, monument that's been uh, actually excavated by archaeologists revealing all of this rich iconography and carving in 1972 when it was discovered and then in 2010 uh, not a long period of time just from that exposure to acid rains and other kinds of uh, weathering events the monument has deteriorated to the point where you can't hardly see what is carved on the surface any longer. We utilize multiple types of spatial and imaging technologies that are brought together on projects to digitally document, preserve, and present to the world everything from objects and collections to architectural and landscape features of significance. Our rich digital representations are useful not only for preservation and management of these cultural treasures, but for presentation, interpretation, and research in the class, online, or even at the site itself. Our efforts for the Armenian Heritage and Social Memory Program are designed to document and digitally present Armenian her history, heritage, and culture to the people worldwide. Being able to present heritage to the broader global audience is critical for Armenia, especially because the majority of Armenians actually live outside the country. Globalization has in fact greatly impacted and accelerated the loss of cultural tradition and knowledge. And in Armenia, there are numerous examples of cultural heritage loss that have already occurred or are occurring from natural destructive factors, as well as human impact and intentional destruction. Heritage preservation across the world benefits from the techniques and methods being brought together for this initiative, with outcomes and impacts extending beyond Armenia. 
The use of digital heritage strategies is not only offering a new way for engagement and education, but promotes heritage stewardship and conservation themes using technology to multiple demographics, including younger generations. Digital strategies facilitate strong social media and outreach capabilities and enhance classroom learning and hands-on visceral connections and opportunities. For example, here we see um, outreach from a project that will include a number of social media and online learning opportunities such as blogs, video and multimedia content, and sharing and feedback opportunities to reach a large number of people. And classroom and on-site learning can also be enhanced. Um, here we see a video showing digital documentation strategies using augmented reality. This is a technique that allows the connection between inanimate and animated objects, in this case using a bring-your-own-device kind of concept with a tablet that allows you to view and see a physical place in 3D based on an image that's brought to life from the pages of a book, essentially. In this way, students and researchers become collaborators in the project, visualizing data and providing feedback and information in ways that engage and allow new ways for learning and sharing. The Armenian Heritage and Social Memory Program utilizes new and emerging technologies to record and visualize the foundational aspects of Armenian heritage and identity, such as religion, literature, and architecture and art. Digital Strategies Enabling Democratization and Access. As a starting point, the Hapat Monastery was selected as a site for our first demonstration for these technologies. This monastery is considered to be uh, a universal value area according to UNESCO and the World Monuments and ICOMOS Heritage Institutions. The site is thought of as a masterpiece of religious architecture and as a major center of learning in the Middle Ages. In fact, the site is recognized by the International Council on Monuments as one of the most culturally significant places in Armenia. Complexity of designs are remarkable achievements of the medieval architecture presented here, and the compound includes frescoes, bas-reliefs, and monumental sculptures. Designs and construction techniques that were used here spread across Europe and Central Asia and, in fact, continue to be utilized today. The site was designed very carefully with a planned landscape, including very dramatic views and lighting that are hard to see and appreciate even when you are at the site. Here, for example, we see a time-lapse video showing movement of light through the St. Gregory Church at Hop Hot occurring during our visit there on September 23, 2015, and captured through time-lapse videography. At Hop Hop, we used a suite of 3D and imaging technologies that are allowing us to see and to share this ex entire site in the highest resolution and detail possible, including 3D and terrain analysis of the landscape in its full entirety. Complete forensic type analysis of the entire complex can be conducted using these data, including the presentation and representation of the most accurate mapping of the site to date. Public sharing and engagement using these data, including this presentation online of 3D models, here showing data collected across the site using drone-based photogrammetry technologies and providing an animated 3D tour of the site. The 3D renderings and models can be used to make and show these landscapes in ways never before possible. Additionally, we performed ground-based survey, capturing and verifying spatially accurate details across the site and associating important attribute and conditional information with positions using survey-grade global positioning systems. Brought together, the GPS and other geolocation information collected are providing us with highly accurate maps and cartography, able now to see micro-topographic features and details, showing the entirety of the built environment and terrain and elevation features. 
from these digital terrain models, accurate map products reflecting the extent of the complex features can be made, allowing researchers as well as the public to see and understand the landscape better and as well assess changes to the site through time. Here we see a comparison of our mapped site features with a historic map of the site, showing the variation and change that has and is occurring at the site. Our 3D models created using highly accurate three-dimensional terrestrial-based scanning are allowing the entirety of the structures to be digitally archived and studied, including iconographic elements and the architectural details. We can literally slice open or fly through architectural features in order to understand and share how they're built and constructed and their conditional assessment through time. And in examining the surface of the features, we can actually look at and pull out and study iconographic features in ways that are allowing us to do things in, in using different methods. Another important aspect of what we're doing for conservation and preservation are creating as-built or as-is conditional assessments of the site. This is very important to study architectural grammar, for example, and to utilize for stabilization and restoration efforts. Here we see an example of one of our 3D models where we've actually been able to uh, slice the model open to reveal interior structures because we've captured interior as well as exterior elements in three dimensions. Complete as-built drawings, which did not exist for most of these heritage sites, can now be created using the richly representative 3D data. These accurate measured drawings are necessary for conservation structural monitoring, preservation and built environment architectural research. Here we see sectional measure drawings providing uh, details from our 3D survey, which can be used for condition analysis and conservation work at the chapel site in the, f in the future and are useful in analyzing how a structure was made and constructed and how it is holding up to the test of time, uh, looking at its structural integrity. These 3D data can be visualized in a number of ways, and these are also engaging and useful for conservators and researchers alike. 3D models can be made available for classroom learning and sharing, and can even be used with teaching technology such as STEM initiatives, and uh, showing 3D printing, for example, for the sciences using cultural heritage example models. Using these highly accurate models, we can assist with site preservation and protection. Here our data shows a floor area being impacted by ground movement and surface wear and erosion at the site. We can view the entire floor surface in 3D, or we can look more close range at details showing individual burial tombs and carved details. We can also examine temporal aspects of the building episodes as seen here with a wall extending over tomb features. We can use these same data to extract and visualize detailed features relating to position relationships and burial features. Here we see and can examine where in fact tombs are placed and how they may relate to one another. We can also examine shifts and changes occurring to the surface of the features, um, causing differences noted here by elevational change seen by color gradation, um, where we can see micro or millimetric level changes in the um, topographic area. Using these high resolution techniques, we can, for example, see where the floor is buckling, note problems ahead of time before uh, they become too late to do anything about them. We can also look at deterioration of the structure and uh, look at ways to conserve and protect this going forward. We also can use high resolution imaging technologies um, from Hopot. Here we uh, show an example of how we examined a carved object in very great detail. It's a cross stone or catch car um, that it was encountered at Hopot, uh, very high off the ground, making it extremely hard to see the details of this object. Um, we use 3D scanning and advanced imaging techniques 
on these stones in order to allow intimate and uh, close-up viewing and appreciation for all of the detail that can be seen in these uh, very ornate sculptures. Uh, here we see an example of our finalized model with and without color, again done this way so that we can examine uh, carved iconographic details uh, that are revealed when you actually remove the color from the imaging uh, technology uh, on a computer basis. Um, we also have created complete models that allow visualization of the entirety of the sculpture. Uh, when you see this in person, you don't actually see that there's carving on three sides and that the carving actually contains uh, a literary text uh, that really can't be examined in any other way except through these kinds of technologies. And if you know, we've made these public so that researchers and um, students interested in this or even interested in the technology side of this can actually share and interact with this. This particular model um, was chosen by ICOMOS as uh, one that they are actually sharing on their site as well um, and the UNESCO site uh, from uh, the Sketchfab uh, channel. We've also utilized um, gigapixel imagery technologies, advanced imaging kinds of uh, applications that have captured uh, literally hundreds of photos, brought them together into one image for this catch car. Um, so you get incredible detail that you can uh, preserve for viewing and for analyzing this piece. So we can quite literally study this in depth and in detail, uh, looking at things like pigmentation, iconography, deterioration. Um, in this case, we've made these available publicly as well so that anyone can go online and actually um, look at these at leisure uh, in, in full detail as you're seeing a video uh, made of that here. And we've also used these same types of imaging enhancing techniques on a number of features at HotPot, ensuring not only the digital archival aspects of their recordation, but allowing for detailed resurrection and the potential for restoration for damaged pieces. Here is a lintel um, that we saw in the previous image uh, that we've... Uh, imaged in very high resolution detail using a technique called reflectance transmission uh, imaging, RTI imaging. Um, and this type of uh, technology allows us to uh, create a photo mosaic, again, hundreds of images that are taken that are brought together in a computer enhanced environment so that it appears to be one image, but we can actually move the lighting source to allow us to visualize in great detail what is actually carved on the surface. And we can see where we're moving uh, across the, the piece. Um, here we're viewing the entirety of the piece, and then we can go in and look at uh, more exact areas uh, with detail enhanced from lighting, um, surficial lighting. We can uh, change the gain and uh, go in and zoom in and actually view what's carved on the surface of these stones um, in a way that, that we can't do if we're in person or with other types of technologies um, that have been applied. Here we're changing the specular enhancement so that we can actually see uh, reflectivity different, which allows us to see shadowing different and pulls out uh, the details that are carved on the surface of the stone. This stone has actually been um, vandalized. Um, and we can really enhance those carved details that are being impacted by things like lichen growth and vandalism um, that obscures what we're seeing on the piece. Using the Hop Hop Project example, we're also working in collaboration with the University of South Florida Library. Here we're permanently storing and presenting and sharing all aspects of the project with the world, allowing educators, researchers, and interested public to have full access to the technologies and products that emerge from this project. All data is being processed in such a way as to be software neutral, not requiring any specific need for expensive investment in the use of these data, making them not only free, but making them secure and accessible into the future. We're working with heritage collaborators in Europe as well to ensure the widest dissemination and potentials for the data utilization. 
Our aims and future goals include the continuance of the Hop Hop project development and sharing opportunities through educational and online endeavors. We intend to move forward with a number of other planned World Heritage sites and collection documentation projects in Armenia using a similar approach as presented here. Overall goals for the Armenian Heritage and Social Memory Program include directly engaging and involving the youth and other demographics, both in Armenia and the diaspora, inclusive of the international public at large. We wish to improve relations and reconnect Armenians to their original homelands and reinforce Armenian community structures through these projects and efforts. We'll provide the geographical and sociocultural context in which the literary tradition emerged and connect Armenian heritage to concepts of universal value, displaying the importance of art, history, and cultural traditions through landscape, architecture, and art understanding. The modernization of strategies for education and engagement with democratizing capacities for global sharing of information will be put forward using digital strategies for preservation and education. And another goal is to preserve and digitally archive Armenian cultural heritage for the greater appreciation, understanding, management, interpretation, and long-term protection of Armenian heritage. Thank you for your attention and we look forward to working with you in the future.